So are you looking for some interesting ways of adding texture to your art journal pages? Today we'll be exploring the uses of plastic wrap and how you can use it in your art journal pages to create some really beautiful, unique textures. So let's get started. So the first thing we need to decide when we're going to add a saran wrap to these backgrounds is do we want to start with a white surface or a colored surface? So I've done a couple here in color. I also have one that is white and I'll show you how it looks on the different surfaces. But I generally like to start with a colored surface just because I like how it looks a little bit better when this technique is finished. It really comes down, do you like a lot of white space or don't you like a lot of white space? So I'm basically I'm taking a piece of plastic wrap and I try to make it around the size of my page, often a little bit bigger, just to make sure that it fully covers the surface. I've been adding some white pieces of paper in behind. You can use magazine sheets, you can use silicone mats. There's lots of things that you can use for this step. And what I like to do is basically just add the saran on top just so I know where to place my paint because I'm going to start placing my paint on the surface. I'm going to be using a variety of paints. I have a bunch of um, distress paint, which is a quite a high flow paint. I also have some paper artsy paint. I also have a lot of my heavy body uh, Liquitex and Pabio paints. So I'm going to add in a couple spots of this Eclipso chalk paint first. And this one's it's fairly liquid. I'm actually getting closer to the end of the bottle, which makes me really happy. Then I'm going to add in a little bit of this rosy color, which is kind of a rose gold color. So I'm going for quite a bit of metallic on this surface. I'm also going to go with some of my professional paints here. I just love this pale olive color and I really wanted to add it in. So I'm going to add it in in a few spots just to try to give this a bit of a different look. And this is a lot of paint. This is not a little bit of paint. This is a lot of paint and you could probably go with less paint, but I really wanted to cover the surface quite well with this. And this is meant to be more muted colors than I usually work with. So now what we want to do is we want to flip it on over and add it to our page. And you might go like, that's not a lot of paint. And now this is where we start squishing. This is where we start moving the paint, we move the plastic wrap, we move things around. And so that doesn't look super interesting, but then we start moving it around on the surface as we create. And this is a lot of paint. I am very aware that this is a lot of paint. Originally, I learned this technique from Alyssa Burke, and she was talking about this in the way of, well, if you don't have a jelly plate, this is a nice way you can look at adding texture. But you can see it does give some very random texture to our page. And it actually would maybe gone a little bit lighter with that paint just because it's on quite thick. But this is also where if I didn't like it, I could always just take a corner that doesn't have plastic wrap on it, or I can even get a separate piece of plastic wrap and pull up a little bit of that paint. But before I do that, because this paint is wet and it's gonna take a little while to dry, be warned that this is not a really fast technique. So I'm gonna take my plain piece of paper and I'm gonna add this on because you're usually gonna have enough paint for two or three layouts. It's almost like if you have less paint, you get better uh, results. So I think next time we'll go a little bit lighter on it on the next background that I'm gonna show you. But every one of these ones is different, so it's also not expecting the exact same results every single time. And so you will still always end up with a little bit of the saran that has paint on it. Turn this upside down so that the clean plastic side is down and just lay it somewhere and let it dry because this can be used as collage at a later date. And so with this one here, I feel like there's a few places that are maybe a little bit heavy in color. And this is another place I can take another piece of plastic wrap. And so if I call it Saran, it's because <laughs> I've always known it as Saran wrap and I'm like, really, it's Saran is a brand name and it's hard to get away out of the thought of the brand name. So if you find you have too much on, you can always pull some of it off onto your piece of plastic wrap. And you can do that a few times if you find that you have too much paint on your surface. And those are fairly muted colors, more than I usually use on my art gel pages. But you know what? It's kind of fun to mix it up instead of always being bright. But for this one, I want to go a little bit brighter like I usually do. And because I have a nice red background, this is where we can start playing around with a lot of contrast between different colors. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. This is going to be a little bit harder because this book is a little bit stiff. And that, that's quite a liquid paint. This is some of the lemon meringue, a chalk paint. And I'm trying to use up a lot of this stuff. I've had a lot of paint for a very long time and I've realized I really got to start bringing my collection down a little bit. It's gotten a little bit out of control. I also have this cobalt teal golden acrylic paint. This is an older paint, so you can see it's quite thick. So one thing you can do is you can either smear it out like I am here uh, to keep it going on thinner and just to kind of help it along. Uh, the other option is you could look at adding some water if you really wanted 
to smear this. But I find some of the beauty in this technique is being able to allow some of those spaces to not go on perfectly. It's leaving those gaps and leaving those spaces. If you're being frugal with your paint, this may not be the technique for you. But what I like about it, it is fun to play around with. And now it's just playing around and squishing and moving. And it's leaving in some of those red areas too, right? You don't want to lose all of that beautiful red background. But it's leaving some spaces in between as well too. And this is messy. So you have to be okay with getting messy with this. If you're not a messy person <laughs> and you're like, this is really, really messy, that's okay. This is, may not be the technique for you. But I wanted to show you something a little bit different. And again, you could also do a few colors at a time and then layer with some other colors as well. You don't have to always do it all the same color. But what I like about this is I, I like those red spots that are coming through. I really like having a red undercoat on these and then using cooler or warmer colors because I just find it just adds a little bit of pizzazz to these pieces. So I absolutely love this layout. I love the colors that I chose and I really like that I did add in that dark green because it mixed with the other colors so beautifully. And now that this is fully dry, and you can tell it's fully dry if it feels room temperature when you touch it. If it's still cold, it means that it still needs a little bit more drying time. So you can hit it with a heat tool or you can let it air dry like I did. And now we want to go in with our pens. And so at this point, we can choose our favorite pen. So I have these microperms. I also have the Faber-Castell Artist Pit pens. I also have a black paint pen that I can use. And if you're interested in trying to figure out a good permanent pen, for your creative practice, just check out the video in the card above or in the description below where I share some of my favorite black pens. And so we want to start finding areas that we want to start adding details to. So what I'm doing is I'm starting to outline areas that go around the different colors. So I'm basically just adding in the areas that create contrast. And what's neat about this is you can decide how much detail. You can really take every tiny little mark uh, you could also take areas like this and you can make the decision that you're just going to do some of the larger red areas and leave out all the details. But I personally love to add in these details. I think it adds so much to it. And you don't have to be perfect about it. You can make the choice to have certain areas you leave in, other areas you leave out. You can choose areas that only have contrast. And you also don't have to outline. I like the outlining just because I find it really therapeutic. I really get into it. And this is something to do if I'm listening to music or I'm trying to find a little bit of quiet in my day. Because what this does is this really helps me slow down. This stops me getting really fussed about completionism. Instead, it's about finding all those fun little details and adding in lines to them. And this is a technique I did learn from Alyssa Burke a few weeks ago, and I have to say, it is fantastic. What I love about the way she works is that she likes to add in a lot of her own drawn details to her work, and it's something that I'm trying to do more in my own style. And then you can also make the choice of taking in some of these areas that are in these larger blocks of color and breaking them out uh, so that every color ends up being its own thing. You can also just leave them as large areas of color really comes down to what you're trying to accomplish and what kind of style you like. And this is another option where we have this one that I did more of the neutral colors and you could choose to leave it as it is or you could choose to do some outlining as well. It kind of depends on the look that you're looking to do. I did want to create some more outlines in here, but again, this is your choice of do you stick with just the gold areas? Do you add in other areas? How do you go about this in a way that's going to be really unique and is in a style that you really appreciate. And this one is mostly in muted colors because I want this to look a little bit more like a map. Because when you really get into this, because of areas that are more blue-green, you can look at the gold areas as land masses, you could look at the blue-green as areas of water, you could have the green as land masses, you could have the silver and blue. This could also be clouds. You could look at this as being like a lot of different clouds in the sky and you could go over some of these areas in a really interesting way as well too. So there's lots of options. It really comes down to what does your eye see? Where do you want your imagination to go as you create? And again, this is another one that I will I will take off camera and finish up before we move on to the next step. But I just wanted to show you some of the options that you have when it comes down to these pages. So I now finished all of the doodling on this particular page. So you can see there's a lot of little details. I went into a lot of detail on this particular one, 
mostly because of the fact that I wanted this to look a little bit more land masses, a little bit more like a map. And so that's why I've added in that much detail. I really love how it looks. And at this point, I'm gonna be starting to add other layers on top of it. This is also the point where if you think you love the background, take a scan or a picture of it so that you could turn it into a paper or something else later that you can use again. Because these do take a little bit of time, so it's nice to be able to use them on more than one project. And this is the other one that I fully completed. Again, completely different colors. This one is meant to be maybe a little more a sense of abstraction over looking more like a map. But again, there's lots of things we can do with both of these layouts. So I wanna show you how you can finish both of these pages. And so I'll be sharing a few different techniques for each of these layouts based off of what I see and what I like about each individual background. So with this one, I'm gonna add a circle onto my page. And I'm just using a pencil and my circle and angle maker. Sometimes a circle maker will catch a tiny bit on the paint, but if you haven't seen this tool, check out my video on how to use uh, different circle tools. This is my favorite one, the Helix Circle and Angle Maker for making backgrounds really, really, really quickly. Instead of using a pencil, you could have used just a black pen, but because I wasn't too sure how well this was going to move and I was a little bit worried about slipping, I didn't want to have a big black line on this in a way that it wouldn't look good on the page. So, so far I've used this Mono Twin marker on the acrylic. I'm just gonna go over it with the thicker side of this pen, just because then I can fill it in super, super quickly, and then I can start working on the next layer pretty much immediately. But if this seems like a little bit more than what you're comfortable with, um, you're more than welcome to go in with paint or something else. The hard thing about this particular layout is actually having the courage to kind of go in over top of a background that you've spent a lot of time on and just like, add in your thick area of black. So once you center this, the next thing I would do is basically create yourself a circle. And for some reason, just because of how uneven this is with all the different layers of paint, it's just not going on quite as evenly. So I've basically, I'm going in and I'm strengthening that white line. And I'm just gonna be able to basically add in like some simple circular shape. This is more of a Mandela shape, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a Mandela. I'm just gonna be adding in some different doodles. And this is where you can have a lot of fun and just start creating larger shapes. So you can see you can end up doing a lot of your own pen work in these flowers and then the shapes. And depending on the white pen you choose to use, you might have ones that are thicker and thinner, and by varying the ones that you use, it'll be easier to get more fine dots and more larger dots, depending on what you like to use in your creative practice. I've been playing a lot more with my gel pens lately. I recently just did a rearrangement of all my pens, and so I'm trying to use them a lot more. And uh, in the next few weeks, I'm, I'm hoping to finish filming and getting uh, some of my organizational stuff done for my art space and then I'll be releasing a whole set of videos about uh, rearranging your art space or how I like to organize my art spaces. I've been going through the process of some purging and just some reorganization. So I love this. So you have one tiny little piece of art on your page and now I'm going to add in a couple little butterflies to finish off this page and because I've been going a lot with the black and white, I'm gonna continue on with the black and white. And sometimes you have these really gorgeous backgrounds. Simplify, just play around with some black and white images and let those speak for themselves. I feel like some of these butterflies might need a little bit more of an edge to help them pop, but I'm gonna start by gluing them down and then I'll pull this aside for a second, decide where I wanna go with this next. Yeah, I feel like those butterflies need a little bit of an outline. They look pretty good, but they're just a little bit not contrasty enough compared to the black area. And I wanna make sure that they do stand out really nicely on this page. I think that's a pretty fantastic little art journal page. And so I haven't decided to add journaling to it yet. I might not add any journaling to it. It might just be an art journal page and that's gonna be lots, but sometimes I like having pages where I'm just playing with techniques. Other times I will add journaling and sometimes I'll have journaling or something to add later on. So for the second more mappish layout, I want to start by adding in a little bit of an edge to this, because I like the look of this, but I want to add a little bit of vintage-y look to this, because I'll make this a little more of a vintage page. So I have a little bit of Tim Holtz Distress Stain here. I'm going to add a little bit just to the edges here. I'm just going to want to try to resist the acrylic a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to blend it out a little bit. 
So let's kind of very lightly color some of those edges as we're kind of moving it in. But it's not going to be super, super dark. So the point is to blend it in a little bit, but it does give it a little bit more of an aged look. But I don't want to do it around the entire thing. I just want to do it in little areas. And so this is why the Distress Stains are nice because it's a very pigmented stain in a nice little bottle. What I like about this is it brings your eye into the center a little bit, but it still gives you that nice edge. And then if you really wanted to have a strong edge, you could always just do a little bit just along the edges here. If you wanted a more starker edge and just let it dry a little bit, which is also kind of a nice effect. So now that we've allowed that ink to dry and you can see that now that it's dried, it looks really nice. It gives a little bit more of that vintagey, warmer tone to some of that gold color. And now I'm gonna come in with a lot of different ephemera. And so I have some ephemera that I've chosen here. I have certain ones that are completely white, other ones that have a little bit of metal tin tape on them. I have lots of different stuff, but I'm gonna to need to color a few of these before I add them. And now I'm trying to decide how much I want to color them because um, again, on white, this is gonna be really contrasting because I want something a little bit more vintage. I'm gonna to need to tone down some of the color first, but how far I want to go, that remains to be seen. So a lot of these tags I'm going to leave as is, though I do have my inks in case I change my mind on that. But first of all, I want to start playing around with a little bit of distress stains. So I'm going to start with a few of the easier ones that I, I know generally which colors I want for them. So I have this vintage photo color, which again is that nice brown that I add to the other edges. It's great for just adding in a layer of color. And what I like about um, the Distress Stains is it's basically ink, but it goes on really dark. And a lot of that is it is a very pigmented ink and it has like a little dauber. So it works really nicely, especially if you don't like getting your hands too dirty. I don't really care because if you've been following me well, you know, I do get my hands dirty. <laughs> but at the same time, it is nice for just adding in like a layer of color. And then you can again add in additional layers of colors if you want to try to get this a little bit deeper in color. But then I didn't want to just leave it there. So I have some of this tarnished bronze and I'm just gonna add in some spots and that's just gonna add in a little bit of shine and lighten that a little bit as well. And if you feel like you've gone too far, just come back over top and play around with it. The one thing I wanted to play with is trying to mix a little bit of vintage photo with cracked pistachio and see if we can get this more patinaed look. I'm going to just take one of these gears and I'm just gonna swipe it through and see what I end up getting. And I think that's gonna work. Yeah, that works okay. Um, with the paper, it's gonna wanna take a little bit more in. I might also try that with the blue and see what I can get. The blue might work a little bit better. I'm trying not to have everything kind of the same color. I, I do wanna try to mix things up a bit. You could also do this just with, with regular ink pads, but I have the stains and I wanted something that went on really quick. And what's nice about this is I don't have to worry about it catching any of those edges. And I'll go with a tiny bit of the vintage photo. Yeah, see now I'm getting some of that fun patinaed color. So I think you need to start with the green and blue colors and then add in the brown. So I wanted to start by adding in a few tags. There's a lot of different ways you can add tags and other ephemera and little things to your pages. I'm going to be starting with kind of thinking about where I want some of these major focal images to start. Because so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to have a lot of it in this bottom third corner and maybe a little bit up top here as well. And so I'm playing a little bit around with placement. And what I want to do is I want to put in a few of these first and then I will um, add in more and more layers depending on what I find I'm liking on this page. These three pieces in here, those are kind of my mean three that I'm going to build everything else around. And so if you're looking at building things, this is a good way of going about it because then at least in this way, you kind of know where you want to put them. And sometimes it takes a lot of fiddling. I'll be honest, I've been fiddling with this a little bit before now. This isn't me just coming up with something in two seconds out of my head. I did about three different iterations before I kind of found the pieces and the look that I like. I like the art glare group because it, it dries quickly and it works really, really well for these types of layouts. And it also works well for strong things like these um, grunge board gears. And another thing to think about as you're placing things is I try to keep as much stuff off the fold, but with this one, there's a few I just can't really keep out of the fold. So I'm gonna just work with what I got. And then what I noticed is when I was creating this page, I felt like everything was too far to this side. So to balance it out, I felt like I needed a little bit of something on this side. I didn't want a ton, but I wanted a little bit. So I'm gonna just very gently pull these gears apart. 
and I'm going to glue them down. They're not gonna have as much contrast, but it is going to stick out a little bit, especially once I add in this guy. So these pages, all of them can be different. With this one, I wanna focus on the idea of the map and the vintage and the idea of travel and adventure and summer. And it made me think a little bit about my summers. My summer, it's been very much at home, but I feel like I've had so many little adventures. <laughs> It's probably one of, my, one of my best summers and I haven't even really gone anywhere far either. And so a lot of people go, well, you have to go somewhere to, to have really interesting times. And I think what I've realized is sometimes just my own backyard is more than enough. I pulled up my mountain bike out of storage for the first time in 10 years and learning to ride my bike again. I remember to ride my bike, but it was more like learning to take it off of the pathways and onto the gravel. <laughs> and so it's been an interesting summer of uh, really getting back into riding and I found some really cool uh, ponds and places. Thankfully the place where the provincial park is actually connected to my neighborhood. I live in South Calgary and in South Calgary we have a park called Fish Creek Park and it has pathways through it, has bike trails through it. There's all sorts of things to see. There's lots of birds and deer and other animals uh, that are always wandering those areas. And so uh, it's been fun going for adventures in just my own backyard. And I think what I really wanted to get out of this project was the idea of finding adventure just wherever you are. So you can see by changing up the focal imagery and even the colors, we have two very unique pages using the same plastic wrap and acrylic technique. And I hope you've enjoyed this technique. I love the idea of being able to use it to create vintage pages and making more map style backgrounds, but I also love that it can be used for creating abstract backgrounds that we can add other layers on top of. And this is important. Sometimes we get stuck in, I already use that technique, I need to learn some new techniques. Sometimes you can use the same technique over and over again, change it up, change your colors, and that's how you start a series of paintings or a series of work. And so by being able to maybe add these in different layers on your page, because you could also start with a background of collage and then add this on. There's so many different ways you can use this technique. And I would love to know if you've ever tried this before, if you have given it a try and what your results are. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, if you could like, subscribe, and just hit that notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. Anytime that you like a video, that just helps share it with more people. So thank you so much for your support. And if you're looking for another video about our journal backgrounds, click here. This is one I did a while back that I thought you'd really enjoy. So I'll see you in the next video.